this lecture, we are going to study multiplicative inverses in the incidence algebra. The question is, which elements in the incidence algebra admit multiplicative inverses? Now, uh, we saw last time that elements of the incidence algebra can be thought of as upper triangular matrices. And we know that an upper triangular matrix is invertible if and only if its diagonal entries are non-zero. And so it shouldn't come as a surprise. Uh, the following theorem um, suppose we have an f function f in the incidence algebra of uh, locally finite post set p then it is invertible if and only if f of x comma x is non-zero for every x now the proof is just by directly computing uh, an inverse of f. So we'll start by computing a right inverse of f. So suppose g is a right inverse of f. In other words, if f star g is equal to delta, remember delta was the unit in the incidence algebra this is one if x is equal to y and zero otherwise so if f star g is equal to delta uh, then firstly uh, for every x in x we must have uh, f star g x comma x is equal to uh, delta of x comma x which is equal to one but f star g x comma x well what is this this is just sum over uh, all y, f of x, y, g of y, x. But now, this condition for these f of x, y, and g of y, x being non-zero is that x is less than or equal to y and y is less than or equal to x. But that means that y is actually just equal to x. So this is in fact equal to f of x, x, g of x, x. So this means that g of x, x is equal to f of x, x inverse. In particular, um, if f has a right inverse, then we must have that f of x, x is non-zero. Um, and uh, then g of x, x will be equal to the multiplicative inverse of f of x, x. Now, what about the other values of uh, g? So suppose we take any element, uh, any pair x less than y, and let's try to compute uh, f star g. So what we know is that, of course, delta of x comma y is equal to 0, since we're assuming that x is strictly less than y, which means that x is not equal to y. Well, but that is supposed to be uh, f star g of x comma y. Okay, but I can write that as, uh, so this is going to be the sum uh, over z and f of x, z, g of z, y. This is the definition of multiplication in the incidence algebra. But I'll separate out one special term, which is uh, f of um, x, x, g of x, y. And so here I would put z strictly less, uh, greater than x, which is less than or equal to y. Now, suppose we have computed a g of x comma z for all z strictly less than y. Uh, what I mean is uh, for all x less than or equal to z less than y. So you could start this kind of induction on z equals x for which we have computed g of x z. g of x x is f of x x inverse. And so now suppose we have already computed g of x z for x less than or equal to z strictly less than y. Then we can use this equation up here to infer the value of 
g of x, y. After all, we're assuming that f of x, x is uh, uh, invertible. So what we get is we can actually compute g of x, y is equal to minus f of x, x inverse times sum of x less than z less than or equal to y f of x z g of z y so recursively you can compute g of x y for all um, x and, for all x and y using this method uh, of course we know that uh, we, for that we use the fact that uh, x comma y the interval is finite so remember, when we talk about incidence algebra, we only talk about locally finite cosets. And maybe I should have mentioned that right at the beginning, but P is a locally finite coset. So G of X, Y can be determined recursively for all x and y we're assuming x less than or equal to y starting with the base case x is equal to y so what this shows is that g is uh, uniquely uh, completely determined and well defined uh, by f so f has a right inverse if f of x x is not equal to 0 for all x in p and in a similar manner you can show that f has a left inverse if f of x x is not equal to 0 for all x in p let's look at the most important uh, example of uh, an inverse in the incidence algebra which leads to uh, the mobius function so define the function zeta of x comma y to be 1 if x is less than or equal to y and 0 otherwise. Now let's try to compute. So this function of course has the property that zeta of x comma x is 1 for every x in p. So let's compute its inverse. So what we get is its inverse of zeta is usually called the Mobius function of P. And uh, we can compute it using the uh, previous formula that mu of x, y is equal to firstly it's equal to 1 if x is equal to y that's equal to summation minus x less than or equal to z strictly less than y mu of x z if x is strictly less than y and it's zero otherwise of course because it lies in the incidence as this is um, the way to calculate the Mobius function. Now one thing I should point out is that in an algebra if an element has a left inverse and a right inverse then they must be the same. So if f star h is equal to delta and h star g is equal to delta then we can write h as well h is h not h let's say then we can write f as f star delta right because delta is a multiplicative unit but that is the same as f star h star g 
and using associativity this is the same as f star h star g which is delta star g which is equal to g so the left inverse and the right inverse must coincide in an algebra if they both exist and so mu is uh, not just the right inverse of zeta it is also the left inverse of zeta and here's a little exercise for you use the fact that mu is the left inverse of zeta to deduce that mu of xy is equal to minus summation x less than z less than or equal to y mu of zy for all x less than y in p. Of course, mu of y comma y is going to be 1 for all y in p. So these two equations completely determine mu. And so you can compute mu in two ways, either using this first equation or using this. It's a uh, now time to point out something very important about uh, Mobius inversion that basically it does not, it's, it's a local concept. It does not depend on the whole post set. So what do I mean by that? Let me be clear. So suppose I have a post set P, locally finite of course. And uh, consider Q to be just the interval x comma y thought of as an induced sub poset of p right so this is just um, z belongs to p such that x is less than or equal to z is less than or equal to y so this poset has a unique least and a unique greatest element just by definition uh, q has a unique least element Um, which I will call zero hat and that's just the element x and the unique largest element or greatest element which uh, I call one hat and that is equal to y. And uh, what is more, uh, if you look at either of these equations one or two up here, you will see that the calculation of mu of x and y depends only on the values of mu inside the interval uh, x comma y. So you don't need to know anything about the post set outside of the interval x comma y. And so what we have is that mu p by the equations 1 and 2, uh, either of them, mu p of x comma y is the same as mu q of 0 hat comma 1 hat. So every Mobius uh, function computation is simply a computation of a Mobius function of an interval at the least and largest elements. Okay, this is a very useful trick. Let's let's look at uh, an example. We can use isomorphisms of post sets and so on combined with this to get uh, very nice examples. But uh, okay, let me start with a trivial example of Mobius inversion. So take uh, P to be the post set of natural numbers with the usual, uh, not natural numbers, non-negative integers with the usual uh, linear order less than or equal to. So these are, remember N here stands for non-negative integers in this course. And then you can easily check that mu of n is equal to uh, 1 if i is equal to j minus 1 if i plus 1 is equal to j and 0 otherwise. And in fact, uh, 
we'll uh, okay so so let me just leave it at that and let's look at another example that we had seen before uh, p is this both set three one two and uh, you can just compute uh, the Mobius inversion by doing matrix inversion. So uh, mu uh, will be associated to a matrix, which will be the inverse of the matrix of zeta. And zeta had the matrix uh, like this in this case. And you can just invert this matrix and uh, you will find the inverse, the little computation. Of course, you could also use the equations uh, 1 and 2 to determine uh, the inverse, but you can just invert the matrix as well. And these are equivalent things. So I'll just draw the Mobius function here. But uh, on each of these entries, it's of course 1. So what we can say is that mu of 1, 1 equals mu of 2, 2 equals mu of 3, 3 equals 1, mu of 1, 3 equals mu of 2, 3 equals minus 1.